main scripture, and we'll use three scriptures tonight, and this is probably the main one. It's familiar to some of you, but I'm going to tell you what we're going to minister here. What we're going to minister is, uh, get some of this buzz down for me, so it doesn't distract me as much as anything. The other day, the Lord gave me this message, and when he gave me the message, you know, if anybody ever needs it, it's me. And if anybody else ever needs it, it's my wife. And I just bet that y'all need it too. Amen. And what he told me was that taking thoughts captive before they take you captive. And the scripture is uh, is right here with it. It's 2 Corinthians uh, 10 and verse 5, and there's a verse above it. And this, I'm going to read it to you in context, and then we'll get to this right here. It says in verse 3, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 3, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, verse 4, are not carnal, earthly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And then we have this part here, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And, and I, I won't say that one more time without moving again. Casting weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We're going to pick up verse 3. Though we walk in the flesh, we live in an earthly world. You have to go to sleep, I have to go to sleep, you have to eat, I have to eat, we have to work, we have to make a living, we have to deal with a whole lot of issues, amen? amen. But just because we live in this world, of, we don't have to war after the flesh, after the world. For the weapons that we have, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God and they pull down strongholds. We sing a song years ago called Pulling Down Strongholds, huh? in the name of Jesus. Pull it down, strong Ooh, I don't remember the rest of it, but I remember that pulling down part. And part of that pulling down is casting down of imaginations. Now, imaginations, a lot of times, are things that's not even real. Amen. Or we wouldn't have to say imaginations. imaginations. And these are things that happen in your, yeah. in your head, in your mind. mind. Amen? Yeah. In your thought process. In your memories, we could say in your emotions, okay? All of these things. And it says that, that we've got to cast down imaginations. That's how things could turn out. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I've been reading this week over and over where God told them in the Old Testament to not fear the gods of the other nations. Yes. Said, so you're to only fear the Lord. Right. Yes. Huh. Yes. But in our imaginations, when you become afraid of something, you've imagined it to be higher than God. Or God's love. Yeah. Or yeah. higher than what you believe God will do for you. Yes. God might do it for someone else, but that imagination of being old and alone, that imagination of being in an accident, that imagination of doing about that imagination of losing people that are very precious to you, the imagination of them not making it into the kingdom of God. That imagination seems to get bigger. Yes. Yeah. Don't be afraid of an imagination. Fear God. Man. 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 And, and we can't fear two things at once. Yep. If you don't believe that, you know, look in life. Sometimes we make decisions based on, well, here's a car coming in this lane and an even bigger vehicle coming in this lane. We make decisions based on, well, I sure don't want to get run over by this semi, and this is a Fiat over here. Well, you know, if I've got to move, I'm going to move. Yeah. <laughs> but there are times we make decisions like that in life. Well, I'm afraid of this, but I'm more afraid of that. And so many times people are afraid of things staying the same, but they're more afraid of change. Yes, yes. 
So they go toward this way. But this message is going to be a little bit unique. Now notice we're going to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And then we're going to bring it into captivity. And we're going to have to do it how? Does it tell us there? But every, listen to me, it didn't say every third thought. thought, thought. Right. It didn't say every fifteenth thought. It said I'm going to have to bring into captivity every thought and make it obedient to Jesus. Amen. 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 Because the battle is going to be on the thought level. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And you might lose the battle, but there's still a war. We'll say it this way. You might you may lose a thought battle this morning, but you don't got to stay in that for ten years. That's right. Right. You just need to take that captive thoughts one by one by one by one. And this is the message God gave me. He says, Don't let thoughts hold you hostage. Mm. Now see, we think captivity and we think like jail or we think prison. Or we think something like that. But God gave me the picture of, of here is someone that has come to terrorize you and hold you hostage. And you can't shoot it with a gun. And you can't keep it out with an alarm system. Because it's on the end. Not on the and there's no defense on the outside to protect me from thoughts. I can put up all the cyber barriers in the world. But the thoughts are on the inside. And thoughts will hold you hostage. Right. And one thing to remember is if your thoughts start to hold you hostage, realize that you're a victim. Mm. Right. Amen. Don't start uh, doing the Patty Hearst syndrome where you suddenly become... One of them, and that's too old for most of us, I understand. You have to look it up on the internet and find out who Patty Hearst was. Yeah. And, but, so I don't use illustrations that require people to, to think about things. Don't let thoughts hold you hostage. Jesus said, the Bible says, take no thought. Or let no thought take you hostage. When you take a thought, you got to be very careful because that thought can be the most like a serpent. Yes. Wrapping itself around. And for, you thought you had the snake. You thought you had that thought. And then before you know it, that thought's got you. Anybody can testify. Amen. I mean, I could be doing good and yes. see something in a movie. And all of a sudden, here comes some fear. And I think, well, now you know I was being prepared. What if that happens? And I reach out and I get a hold of that thought. Before I know it, that thought has a hold of. Amen. 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 And we're using fear for an example, but it'll work with any type of sinful thing. It'll work with any kind of temptation. The devil, all he can do is send things by, but you're like the fish and you have to buy that. That's right. Don't take that thought. It may have a hook in it. Right. So take no thought or let no thoughts take you yeah. hostage. How do you know if it's got you hostage? It tells you where to go. Yeah. It tells you where to go. Yes. We're going over here to remembering that. And then we're going to go and we're going to remember. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to remember when you spy. And then we're going to remember over here where that is. And now we're going to remember every bad story you ever heard about anybody that this ever occurred to. Yes. And before long, you've got a thought with a gun to your head telling you where you're going to go. Well, I can't go down there because, you know, it's a little dark. Well, that might be wisdom if you didn't take a fearful thought beforehand. Yes. And now what could be wisdom is now fear. Amen? You all know the difference, don't you? Yes. There is wisdom. There is yes. common sense. But if you're not careful, them bars on the windows you put on there to keep them people out, now be the bars on the windows that keep you in. Yes. And that's what I think about when I go through neighborhoods and all the bars are on the windows. If you got bars on the windows, I'm not against you having bars on the windows. I can understand why you might want some. But when you're looking out one day, do you suddenly feel like the guilty people are free? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're behind the bars. That's right. That happens when thoughts take us hostage. I'm protecting myself. I'm protecting myself. And before I know it, it's taking me hostage. 
It's telling me where to go. It's telling me what I can do. Right. You hear me? Amen. It's telling me what I can do in life. It's making decisions for me. Uh -huh. You don't believe it? Amen. I give you some examples. Amen. It'll tell me what to think. Uh-huh. Tell what to think on. You try to quit thinking about it, and it keeps coming up. It's just, anybody ever had it keep coming up? Maybe all night long. Just keep coming up. Because you've been held hostage, and it's telling you what to think. You better be very afraid. You better be very afraid. You better, you know, you're never going to get out of this. Yeah, and so we're going to have to have some help, aren't we? Amen. What? When you don't have freedom to think of what you want to think about, you are in captivity, and you've been held hostage. Now, whether it's about who's going to pay the light bill, or whether what you're going to do about getting your driver's license renewed, or whether or not your eyesight's getting better or worse, or whether you're, you know, on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what. When it tells you you can't think about nothing but what it tells you to, you're the hostage. And I don't know about you, but if you got if you were held hostage, and maybe they got you in the car, or maybe they got you, you know, in the house, and maybe you got your cell phone. Maybe you might die what? That's, that's Psalm 91, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you might call out for help, but instead you just go, I just can't quit thinking about it. I can't quit thinking yeah. about it. I can't quit thinking about it. God, I can't quit thinking about it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what, we, what we need to do is realize that we're being held hostage and we've got to do something to change the situation. Okay? So we don't got this established. You know, our thoughts can take us hostage. Yeah. Sometimes hold you hostage all night long. We don't want to think about it, but we just can't. Have you ever been there where you just can't yes. get it? You try, you try to think about something else. You try to tell it to stop. You try to say, oh, this one I want. And whether it's somebody that you need to forgive or somebody that you forgave 400 times. Yes. Well, we ain't done yet. Months. You just can't get it to stop. Yeah. You seem powerless. Yeah. It seems so strong. I mean, it's a thought that all day long you can live with. You work, you mind your own business, you go on. But it starts getting dark and that thing holds you. Yes. And that's why people drink and that's why people do things. They're trying to blot out. But you can't blot it out because it's got you hostage. In other words, we'd say we're in bondage. Huh? Yes. That sounds more like a slave. And that's all right if you want to say that. I prefer hostage because I've seen a lot of cop shows. Yeah. Have you seen any cop shows in your life? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I've seen quite a few on Family Feud the other day. They said, what's the, that you're supposed to list something that's a popular occupation on TV and cop was right yeah, up there. That and doctors. Everybody on TV is a doctor or a cop or a lawyer. There's no, yeah, yeah. There's no <laughs> poor working people on television. <laughs> And if they are, they'll become doctors, lawyers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Soap opera specifically. I want to look at some thoughts of some types of thoughts that take you hostage. Is that okay? Amen. I said you. I don't leave me out. Did you understand what I'm saying? Come on now. Thoughts. One of them is unwelcome. Yeah. Thoughts. Those are predators. They might be temptations. They might be fears. It may be trying to tempt you to do something you don't want to do. See, the devil's not limited to tempt you to things you want to do. Right. He's right. not. Unwelcome thoughts. Thoughts that you said, well, I would never want that thought. Blasphemous thoughts to attack people, attack Christians. The devil sends them and you're trying to, it's trying to curse God. Trying to curse God. And you're trying to hold it in. Trying to hold it in. Talk to many, many sweet people that love the Lord that have unwelcome thoughts. You understand what I mean now? Yes, sir. The thoughts that, that, that think the worst about a situation and not the best. That just no matter what you try to do, they're unwelcome thoughts. They're not thoughts that you would just say, oh, we'll just come on over and have some tea. Yeah. <laughs> and we might get to them in a little bit. <laughs> but, but those are unwelcome thoughts, okay? Unwelcome thoughts, invading thoughts. That's where you get one little thought, and it doesn't seem so bad, but they're like the people that kick your door in. They knock on the glass of water or to use your phone, and the next thing you know, you got a home invasion going on. I mean, they, they come in in a little thought. I mean, it was just that smell of that Christmas tree. It really wasn't much. It reminded you of Christmas and what, 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 and who, 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 and the next thing you know, you got invading. 
and my mama has a little trouble with memory sometimes, not much. They, they diagnosed her as pre-Alzheimer's a few years ago. She'll stutter every now and then. She'll have trouble with memory something she's trying to say for a moment. And if you trick her, Daddy was tricking her day. If you trick her by changing the subject, she'll go back right back to where she was. I've known that for years. You can, you can disrupt thoughts because thoughts are triggered by all kinds of things. Just because you can't remember it on one level, God's wired us so smells remind you, sounds yeah. remind you, songs remind you. Yeah. All these different stimulus are wrapped in our memories. And man, you may have forgot it totally over here on an intellectual level, but you hear something over here and it brings it back and suddenly it transports you. Right. And sometimes those invading thoughts come in just on something that's familiar. And the next thing you know, you went from here to invading thoughts spread out. See, some of these thoughts are one thought over and over and over. Others spread out. Sometimes that, that invading thought is, don't you feel sorry for yourself? Of course, it doesn't still say it that way. Sometimes it says you deserve better than that. You deserve a break today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, or it, it ain't fair it ain't fair. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. that, little, that, little, that little thought opens up to a whole bunch of thoughts that invade and do like a computer virus for those of us that know what a computer is and how it works. I mean, you don't want no virus. Quit taking all that free stuff off the internet. That free downloads, mess your stuff up. Yeah. It's the venereal disease of the internet. Stay away from it. Yeah. It just messes stuff up. You're better off to pay a dollar for something as opposed to take the free one most of the time. Because you always get more than you bargain. Right. You open that little email from that person you ain't seen in a long time. Turns out it wasn't from them. Something took over theirs and sent something to everybody on their list. I had somebody actually send me an email one time and say, Are you really in Africa? No. <laughs> I'm not in Africa. Yeah. It wasn't showing on mine, but it was showing where it was emailing stuff and my name from all over from from Africa and here and there and the other and on. I wrote him back and said, Pastor, I used to have and I wrote back and said, no, I wish I was preaching in all them countries, but obviously it's going without me. <laughs> and no, don't buy whatever they were selling. They were trying to sell something. Yeah. And, but you know, so you have invading thoughts and they can lead to <laughs> automatic <laughs> thoughts. That's thoughts that take off without you. Go places you ain't got enough imagination to take you. Get in a hole you couldn't figure out how to dig till it went there and you go, my God, how'd I get there? Yeah. Those automatic thoughts. And now they're moving off out you. Some of them's like a machine gun. They're going, that, 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 Dear Lord, it ain't that bad. Get back over here. Jesus did it, Jar. So you got automatic thoughts and then we got unpleasant thoughts. We could you could throw some other ones in there with unpleasant, but unpleasant is just unpleasant and they just want to rob your peace. Keep you miserable. Not let you rest. Not let God restore you in the night season. Unpleasant thoughts make you an unpleasant person. Yes. Okay, nobody's in it. <laughs> we can't nod our head, but I guarantee you, if you're thinking wonderful thoughts, you feel a lot better. Yes. Tormented thoughts. <laughs> Tormented thoughts. Those are thoughts that torment yes. you. And we know that torment comes out of fear. Yes. And because... Because it says that, that fear has torment. torment. And there are people that have torment and thoughts even about Bible verses. Yes. The devil is not immune to using Bible verses to try to torment you. The one that you can't answer. The one that seems to say that. The one that says there's no hope for you. Forgetting all the other verses, that all old pilot starts shooting Bible verses at you. You ain't lived even attacked with Bible verses. Because then you think it's God. <laughs> you know, it's like that package that says it's from the, the devil brings you a package that it says from God in the corner away at home. Uh, and if it's from God, why did he send it here by you? <laughs> oh. Tormented thoughts. Little lady that, like I said, they had to take her Bible away from her. She got so tormented that they put her in the, the mental thing there for a while and they took her Bible away from her because her Bible would torment her. The very thing that God sent. Yeah. The devil does. 
took on auto thought, afraid that her, her son had, he was he killed at 16 in an automobile accident that was alcohol in the car, and she was afraid that he was in hell, so thoughts of hell and stuff just tormented her continually, even though she saw him get saved in church and walk down the aisle and do all this stuff and talk to him about the Lord, she was so sure that because there was alcohol in that car. Right. So those are tormenting thoughts. And they finally had to take her Bible away from her. And then she got well enough so she could just call you at 3 o'clock in the morning and talk all night long. <laughs> she did. Yeah. Yeah. And I couldn't get off the phone. I did ask her why she didn't call her pastor. She says, well, then he know. Yeah, then he know. Yeah. Then he know. Yeah. Well, that's not the only time that happens. You know, we have a unique situation. We don't really have membership. Everybody can go anywhere they want, do whatever they want, they come and they want, go where they want. We don't own anybody. God owns everybody. They're his sheep. I had a lady call me on Christmas morning one time that, that was leaving worship at another place. And she called me at 6.30, 7 o'clock, whatever, Christmas morning, to tell me all this thing's going on. I said, why don't you call your pastor? Well, then he know. Yeah. She said the same thing. <laughs> Oh. She know you're not what you pretend to be. Uh, well, he might be able to help you because I bet you he's not what he yeah. <laughs> pretends to be either. Yeah. <laughs> because thoughts start coming. Yes. And oh, some we got tormented thoughts. Some amen. Some harassing thoughts. Yeah. Some amen. Just some plain out of place thoughts. I mean, out of place thoughts. Thoughts you ain't thought about in a hundred darn years. Well, not literally. You get close. But not literally, but close, you know what I mean. Stuff that you know, stuff that you ain't thought about since. Yes. I remember looking out the window to watch the cars go by when the Cowboys was uh, playing in uh I guess they was playing the Love Field that far back. And the cars would go outside our window. And I remember standing there looking out that window, feeling sorry for myself. I do, I remember I remember exactly standing there doing it. That comes to my mind sometimes. I remember standing there thinking exactly this. Well, you know, if I, if, and, 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 and for long you make yourself physically sick. That's the day I found out that I could think myself into being sick. And after that, I got out of school all kinds of times. Anytime there was something I didn't want to face, I could make myself physically sick by thinking about it. Absolute truth. You wouldn't know it now because I don't stop for nothing. I've turned it around now. I know if you make yourself Amen. sick by thinking about it, you get well. Amen. What had happened? I felt sorry for myself. It wasn't fair. It was over over something that my brother got that I did. I was like four or five. And I learned, didn't know, I learned you could open the door up. The demon can come in and just help manifest sin. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That thing came right on in. And here it is. All the time I need to be sick. I mean, we're not talking play sick. I mean, I could run a fever. That's the one to get you out every time, that fever. Fever. Run a fever. Uh, it opened doors for migraines later on. I could I could be nauseous by thinking about it. I mean, you just had this wide opportunity. And it was all avoidance, fear-based. But those are out-of-place thoughts. Every now and then, that thought will come up about that very moment. And I'll think, well, that's out of place. Huh? It doesn't fit, does it? And this is the one that gets so many people. Two over thoughts. You don't have those on my day. I call it when you relive the day again. I tell them, no, but I can't do it no more. I ain't got the energy to live it the daytime and live it all night again. I can't do it. She starts about, you know, she starts going over the day. She starts going back over. We should have done this. We should have done that. I should have done this. It's too late. We done did it once. Do that tomorrow. Yeah. But it's still over thoughts. It's, yeah. I should have said this. Yeah. Why didn't I say that? Yeah. Why didn't I think about that? Yeah. Because I was thinking about this. Why, why, what choice could I have made better? Some of those do over thoughts are day by day. Some of them are year by year. Some of them are marriage by marriage. Some of them are <laughs> child raising issues. I should have done that then. I should have done that then. And you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. yeah. And then you get into the medical do over thoughts. Well, what if we just went when the spot first showed up? And what if we just saw this sign? Yeah. And, what if, and the do overs. Yeah. Do overs will consume you. 
And then we can get into what if you'd have done something else for a living? And what if you'd have yeah. done something else in school? And why didn't they tell you how miserable this job was? Why didn't they nobody told you on career day you'll be sick of it in a few weeks? Nobody. Do over thoughts. And, and you know, the devil majors in do over thoughts because he knows as long as you're thinking about doing stuff over, you can't never do what you got to do. Because God wants you to be a doer of the word. Yes. And not a yeah, and not a hear only and not a do over yeah. of what you should have done yesterday. Right. Or maybe you couldn't have done anything about it. Then somebody understands that one, don't they? Yeah. Wouldn't have changed anything. But yet we're reliving. And all that is is the devil, your thoughts holding you. Yeah. You're being held hostage. And this is part of what you hear if you ever want to sleep again. No. Huh? If you ever want to have peace again, if you ever want to get things right again, see, they do hold you hostage, don't they? If you ever want to have fun again, you ever want to have joy again, you ever want to love again, somehow or another you've got to fix this mess. Amen? But you're having one sided thoughts. So we want to talk about how to take a thought captive. Are you ready to find out how? Yes. So, so we've actually got you hungry and thirsty. Maybe to want to take them. Not just ignore them and say, well, I'll watch TV until it goes off. Yeah. <laughs> I'll blot it out. I'll pray praise music. Yeah. And still think. The whole still time. think the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Right it happens because we, we don't want to fight in the natural. Yeah. We want to fight in the spirit. Amen. But sometimes it could be better to take that, you know, don't play the same old sad song over and over and over. If it depresses you, quit playing it. Right. That's all the truth. Don't play B-17 down there at the jukebox. Don't play it in your mind. Sometimes you just have to say, if that song makes me cry, quit it. Who care a certain song that would make me cry? And it would. It'd bring up all these emotions and things. And uh, God asked me one time when it was playing. He said, why are you crying? And I said, because it makes me sad. He said, you're not sad, you're mad. Yeah. Oh, no. And that's when, it crawled, that, that's when I had this revelation. There's lots of kinds of tears. Uh, there's yeah. not just, well, there's happy tears. Yeah. There's bitter tears. There's painful tears. And you find your redneck man, there are. Men get mad enough, they will cry. <laughs> and here I was thinking, every time I cried, it meant I was sad. No, it didn't mean I was sad, it meant I was mad. That's what it meant. And God put the finger on it and said, you ain't sad, quit playing that if it makes you mad. Mm. Ah. So how do we take captive a thought? Start with, we give it no place to plant its seed. Right. See, how do you get rid of weeds? We have to pull them up. If you get fancy, you get these people down here at the weed people over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it still haven't been busted yet, even though it says weed people over there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the weed man. You know? uh -huh. uh -huh. they, they put weed killer out, don't they? Yeah. They don't make it. They make it a hostile situation for the weed to grow, as opposed to well. <laughs> Let's all just welcome your thoughts. It's good as my thoughts. No, they're not. Don't give it place to plant its seed because one thought will spring up and grow and bring forth fruit of other. Yeah. So when the first thought comes, you have to tell yourself, I tell you what, it's like seeing a roach. You better kill it with its first one. Yeah. Don't wait a while. They multiply. Mice multiply. And people's against stray cats for some reason. Do you have any mice we'd have moving for stray cats? No, no, no. I tell you what, they're doing a service. <laughs> we'd be covered over in mice. Jesus said, take no thought. That's what he said. He told us how you take a thought. You take a thought by saying. See, you can have a thought, but you take a thought and, and, and Jesus was talking about basic things. It says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? And what are we going to drink? And what are we going to wear? That's the women's version. <laughs> I don't think I ever thought about it in my mind. What am I going to wear in the morning? They ain't going to keep me awake at night. 
Start on the next morning. I don't know, but but do you understand what it's saying there? Don't let now oh, let's say it this way, I wrote it out. Don't let its voice become your voice. See, when you start to take what it says and speak it with your voice. Yeah. Huh? Right. When that's out your mouth, or when that thought starts to sound like it's no longer it saying it about you. It's you saying it about you. You have took that thought. All right. You have identified with that thought. You have said and said, it's no longer my hostage. It's no longer my, you know, I'm no longer a victim. We're one. That's the Patty Hearst syndrome. But she supposedly got captured. And then she became one of them. That was their excuse was, you know. That. But don't let its voice become your voice. And don't let your voice become its voice. Don't give it words to use against you. It's okay. Let's start with. And then we want to work on how we're going to turn off the auto repeat. You get something stuck on auto repeat, the stereo, the CD player, the alarm. <laughs> we want to get it off auto repeat. Is that okay? Yes. You're no good, you're no good, you're no good, you're no good, you're no good. Her woman sang that and made a lot of money. Yeah. And I hear it, they don't do the darn bit of good for me. <laughs> Who sung that? Linda Ronstadt. Linda Ronstadt. They don't want to sing it. You know, good. <laughs> what's love got to do with yeah, it? What's I mean, love? I bought it. That one out. It's yeah. just a temporary. Yeah. The heart in my heart. Yeah. No, it's not. I mean, there's some demonic things out there. We want to turn off all or repeat, and we want to install autocorrect. Yes. The godly version, not the one on my cell phone. It, it spelled the N word the other day. I was trying to spell bigger, and it made an N off it. I oh. caught it before I punched in, or the world would have ended. It tried to check. Now, why would it do that to me? That's insane. I went, my God, read it before you punch the button. That's right. <laughs> yes. Review. Lord. Review. Yeah, but you got to look at this. Not that big a print for somebody who can't see. That's and you go right. there go, what in the world did it change to that? But autocorrect is where we're going to start letting God automatically correct our thoughts yes, in mid-thought. Right? Amen. Before we punch the sin button. Amen. Amen. So autocorrect. And the scripture says, this is how you do it. It says, is there any good thing? <laughs> Thank on these things. Ah, and we're going to talk about the law of displacement for a minute. If you've got a jar, and an empty jar, and you pour water in it, okay? That's the law of displacement. What did it displace? Y'all all went to school, didn't you? The air, right? And then if you take something else and you drop it into the water, all right? And then the water splashes out where you dropped it in there. That's the law of what? Displacement. Uh, so you, when you put something in, something else has to go out. All right? And what the enemy is doing is he is trying to displace the Word of God. Right. Yeah. And we have to use the Word of God and displace these thoughts. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. you got to put something in its place. You can't leave it empty. Okay? So I can't think of two things at once. And... Uh, if you don't believe it, just try it sometime. It's difficult to think two things at once. Uh, we can count to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can do that. Then if they get you on the side of the road for a DUI, they want you count backwards from a hundred. I can't do that. It's over. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I already got a daze confused. Look on my place. You know, that ain't going to work very long for me because I can't do that. I can't. I go, hundred, ninety-nine. <laughs> you know, I can't do it quickly, can I? Say your ABCs backwards. Yeah. Nah. Nah. So I had to learn a little song to sing it backwards. Yeah. <laughs> That's the truth. Hey, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Well, they didn't teach us. Yeah, C, 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 Y, C, 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 Y, C, C, X, Y. So I know you lost it. Yeah. That's what y'all be teaching kids in school how to pass a DUI test. We don't know how. But I can't think about that and count at the same time. Right. Say the ABCs and count at the same time. It didn't even hit. I can't do it. Uh, One displaces the yeah. other. 
I can't think of two things at once. I tell myself I can listen to the radio and drive, but I ain't sure which one I'm really doing. Because I'll hear something on the radio and go, what did he say? Yeah. Uh, he should have didn't say that, did he? I can't punch a rewind button to find out what he actually said. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and then I'll be drunk, I'll be zooming along over here. I talk on that phone and it don't distract me either, right? And I don't even know how I got to that side of town. <laughs> <laughs> that's just normal. I have to, that was that's all y'all people that can do all that. I tell her, don't distract me. She says, look at the pretty bird, look at the tree. <laughs> no, no. These people's doing this at me, you know? People's crazy out here on this road. I didn't get that old. They're crazy out here. It's happening. It's happening. Big trucks going to. Everybody's like, well, I didn't see that one coming. I imagined all the other things. No, I didn't see that U turn in the middle of that. No, I didn't see that one coming. But I can't think about two things that. And I guess it's all right to drive without thinking because we obviously do it. Don't tell our insurance company. The law of displacement. The idea being that I need to not try to not think about that. I need to replace that thought. Huh? Yes. And, and sometimes we think out of habit, and we have to get a gooder, better habit. Uh, I take thoughts. And this is what I do. I take thoughts, and it turns out the awful way, and I turn that sucker around. I'll use my mouth to turn it, or I'll say it in my head, and I turn that thought from where it was going back over to something else. It took me a lot of years to get to the point where I realized just because I was saying the wrong confession out of my mouth or something negative out of my mouth that I had to stop talking. Preachers never quit talking. We pronounce something differently. We just keep talking until we can make the whole circle. That's what you got to do. You can't stop. You can't go, oh my God, did I say I, I said that wrong? Why don't you just keep talking until it works itself out? you got to do that in your mind. You thought something bad, you have to turn that back around and say, you mean the whole family wiped out in that crash? The angel of the Lord can't try to buy my family and deliver them. That's not going to happen. My God's going to provide for them. My God's going to put his angels over there. You have to take that thought and turn it back. Amen. Yes. Amen. And like the scripture, I've thought it for years and years and years. Haven't seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging bread. Yes. And I've thought about it for years and years and years. And I say, you know, God's going to take care of my children and my grandchildren and great-grandchildren. God's going to take care of because I haven't seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. Some of them need to start thinking that. That's right. You haven't seen the forsaken. God ain't left. God's not going to leave. No. Nope. And they're not going to wind up begging for bread, always going around saying, God, what, what's God say? What's God say? Somebody, no, they're going to have their own supply because he's the bread from heaven. Your yeah. family, he's, all your children's going to be taught of the Lord, and great will be the peace of yeah. your children. That's what you have to replace the other way. But you know, all them days I was doing that, and one day not long ago, God said, you know, you, you always do that. You always do that. What I do, Lord? Well, you say that verse. What's that verse? It says, I've not seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. He says, it's funny, you always skip the righteous being forsaken and you worry about you while well, you're sure I'm going to take care of somebody I ain't born yet. <laughs> somebody understand, you are the righteous and you're not going to be forsaken. And I go, oh, I never realized that was in the verse. I'm always thinking about the next generation. Uh -huh. Yes. You're not going to be forsaken. Well, I'm not dead and gone, but that means he's going to take care of me. Amen. Yes. Amen. And the devil will torment you. If you, get, if you ain't got no kids, the devil will torment you. If you ain't married, the devil will torment you when you get a certain age. But you're going to be old and alone. Old and alone. You're going to be old and alone. Mm. That's a painful deal. You don't want to be old and alone. You want to be with somebody that you wish you was old and alone from. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> wants to be old and alone. That's a country song I'm still writing on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on that. Yeah. Yeah. Probably selling me. It probably selling me. I can hear it now. You know. It's true. I wish I was alone instead of here to alone, alone together with you or something. You know, something out of effect there. And, but you know, there's nothing worse than being alone except being here with you. You know, something out of effect would probably sell very well. Uh, but you understand that the devil's always trying to edge that in there that you're going to be old and one of you think, and then you have to stop and you have to go, well, that's dumb. <laughs> you can be married for 70 years and still wind up alone. And alone. Huh? Yeah. Having kids ain't going to matter. Having a husband or a wife ain't going to matter. 
You hear what I'm saying? And God say, well, you know, you're never going to be alone because I'm always. Yeah. 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 That's where the security comes from. It's not from having somebody in the other half of the house that can't hear half of what you say. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all peacefully coexist most of the time. <laughs> you get stranger and do fairly well. <laughs> you know, get a roommate. You have to correct the thought. The thought says you're going to be alone. The correct thing, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So transforming torment thoughts into comforting thoughts. Amen? There's some people just hoping the other one dies and they try again. And they don't believe in divorce. But they ain't sure that murder's not on the agenda. <laughs> Transforming tormenting thoughts into comforting thoughts. You have this thought that this could happen, that you could get sick, and then, that, then you replace that thought with the one in Psalms that says the Lord will make up all of your bed in your sickness. He's going to take care of. Amen. Tormenting thoughts, sins you've committed. Yes. Because we all have. Amen. Amen. You transform that from a torment thought to thinking about the great mercy of God and how precious the blood is and how wonderful it is that He has erased. Yes. Yes, Lord. And it's never going to be brought out of that ocean of forgetfulness again. Yes, and He separated your sin so far as the east is from the west or whichever direction east and west is. Who's west? But He separated it. You understand? You transform the thoughts. You interrupt the thoughts. You dissect the thoughts. You start to mutate all the devil's thoughts and you turn it into praise to God. Amen. Amen. When you start turning into praise to God, the devil will leave you alone because he don't want you to praise right. God. That's right. So you have to transform tormenting thoughts into comforting thoughts. We call it being transformed by the renewing of your mind. mind. Amen? Because your mind needs to be renewed and it needs to be transformed. That word transformed is the same word as metamorphosis from a from a caterpillar to a butterfly. To a butterfly. Amen. And you've got to start doing it on a thought by thought. Yes, sir, basis. Yes, sir. Because that's what gets us. It's not the great big. We won't swallow a great big lie, but we'll swallow any lie of thought at the time. Somehow or another, God's going to forsake you. The only one in the universe God's going to forsake you is going to forsake you. The only one he's not going to forgive is you. The only one he's not going to tell you. He'd have to become a liar to not do what he said. But don't worry, you're such a strange case that somehow... Amen. Uh, by the renewing of your mind. So we're going to call in the hostage negotiating team. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did I get you? I got you. Yeah. Come and that's now. what that's what I have to do. I have to realize I'm being victimized here. I can't sleep. So I wake my husband up. So he can't sleep. That's, that's her fault. Yeah. So <laughs> or another. <laughs> makes her feel bad. Uh -huh. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Where did you get such a thought? Yeah. I have you all have my dreams. You think him something to deal with. I, nuclear war dream. You know, you're worried about the light bill. Yeah, and I just take the thing and put it together. I can't pay the light bill without him, and I can't take care of myself there either. I need him now. Amen. Right. So I want to call a hostage negotiator, and I want to get out of my thoughts enough and displace it with a prayer and say, Now, Lord, I'm being held hostage. Yes. I need you. Amen. I need the SWAT team. Amen. Amen. Spiritual warfare. Announcing truth. There you go. Praise God. Because I ain't smart enough to do that one. But well, since I need a swap team, I need somebody to come and rescue. Yes. Amen. Amen. Instead of me just trying to get my thoughts together, my thoughts together, and they go over here, and they go over there, and they go down there. Yeah. But I'm going to call for somebody to come and do battle for me. Yeah. I see the Lord. Yes. I live. And then I forget. Uh, all kinds of things, don't I? The, what my SWAT team, whose goal is, is to get you free. Amen. And to take the hostage taker. Yeah. Yes. We well, can Amen. take him hostage, except, you know what I mean. We're not negotiating to let him go. Right. We're going to take every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus. What he says in the Word. Here's the Word of God. That's how it works. The Word of God works like that. It comes to take you, to set you free. 
and to take it captive. And this is a scripture that a lot of us know us in Philippians. It's the first verse I ever learned to meditate because I didn't know there was such a thing as meditating. I didn't know anything about anything, so I just bounced along and God had mercy on me and I discovered things that I found out other people taught, but I didn't know they taught them. I just didn't know no better. I just bounced along. I can find Philippians here. Come on. Too many pages. Come on, come on, come on. It's Ephesians, you get close. There's yes, Philippians sir. chapter yes, 4. Praise God. Whew. And this is just the one piece, but I want to uh, read you a little above it. Uh, so that's like 4 8. So it's, it's close to 4 8. That don't look like the right place at all. I mean, I'm in Ephesians. There's Philippians. They turn it far enough. There it is. That looks better. <laughs> that looks better. Verse 4 Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Rejoice. 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 Amen. That don't mean the same thing without thinking about it, apparently. I mean, that's good stuff. Uh, let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Mm. Be careful for nothing. Yes. But in everything, everything. by prayer and supplication, okay. with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace, peace of God, which passes all understanding. understanding. And I know women may not be able to do it, but I don't know. But I can lay there in bed and not think about nothing. <laughs> I can't. I don't, I don't think I'm abnormal. Well, what are you thinking about at this moment? Absolutely nothing. I'm not thinking of nothing right now. I'm watching y'all doing this, but I have no thoughts going across my mind. I ain't got a thought one. What are you thinking about? I can talk without thinking. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so can politicians. Uh, <laughs> Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. I learned it out of a modern version because I didn't have a King James that far back. And it said it a little different. It would say, uh, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your... Uh, don't worry about anything. That's what it said. The Lord is at hand. Yeah. It said be careful for nothing. Yeah. This was good news version. This was one of, them, one of them ones I got out of school. Be careful for nothing but in everything. Pray. Yes. Supplication. And be thankful. Yes. But your question on God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding it, it, it will keep. Modern version says safe. See, keep, we think of keep like the Bible says, he that loves me keeps my commandments. We think that means you can do them perfectly. That's not really what it says. It means that you'll guard his commandments and say his commandments are true whether you keep them. That's right. right. That's really what it is. I'm guarding his word. Now you should not think you had to. But yeah. Now we know we have to guard the word. Yes. Yes. Because, it, but so, so it's to keep. Because like Adam was supposed to keep the garden. Right. Yeah. But at any rate, I just took his verse and I wrote it down on a little piece of paper. In 10th grade, the gods and stuff, the crazy stuff to think about and worry about continually. Everybody from the law hunting us and everything else. And I wrote it on a little piece of paper. That'd be my demo. It's not what's on there. And I wrote it on that piece of paper and I put it in my wallet. Didn't have no money in there no way. <laughs> a school ID card or something else. And, you know, you just had to carry a wallet because everybody had a wallet. We didn't have no money. And, 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 any time during the day when I got attacked by thoughts and worries, I would get it out and I would read it to myself. Yes. It's called meditating on the Word. Yes, sir. And on a thought-by-thought -thought basis is how I survived. And I might do that once and not have no more problems the rest of the afternoon. I may have to get it out of my pocket three times. And what I was doing was breaking the cycle. I was doing something instead of battling it up here. I was doing something and I was redirecting my thoughts to what it said. It said, Don't worry about anything. The Lord's coming soon. Boy, that got me through a whole lot of things. The Lord's coming soon. It'll get you through a whole lot of things. Yeah. Amen. 
This world is not going to stay like it is forever. The Lord is coming, coming. soon. Amen. So don't worry about anything. Don't be careful for anything. But everything that comes up, pray about it. Yes. Everything, pray about it. Yes. Tell Him what you need. That's supplication. Be thankful. Yes. Gosh. Let your request be made known to God. I was in the place where that was a real big revelation to me that God cared. And you could ask Him about it every little. Amen. And the peace of God. I experienced it on a on a, on a, a time by time by time basis. The peace of God that passes all understanding. It will keep your mind and your heart safe in Christ Jesus. And then it says this right here. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. And by that, it doesn't mean what's on true television. What's on there is probably false. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just. Quit thinking about all the injustice that's going on in the world. Right. It'll make you mad, miserable, and ready to fight. Amen. And fearful it's going to happen to you. I'm serious. That's why we're all so tore up all the time. I don't watch a lot of stuff. It's going to make me mad. Amen. It's going to make my feathers ruffle and my horns come up. And you know, all these spikes are going to come up. I'll be ready. That's what talk radio will do for me. It just made me ready to fight. Yeah. And I can watch a sitcom about five minutes and it does the same thing. They're trying to brainwash me. But it ain't true. It ain't honest. It ain't just. But it says whatever things are true. And whatsoever things are honest, and whatsoever things are just, and whatsoever things are pure. Sure. Well, that tells me some of them thoughts need to be replaced right the hard way, because they're not pure. That's right. It says the pure at heart will see God. Amen. And when I, when I get my thoughts back over on the pure, then I can see God in the situation. As long as I'm just mad, the wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. And whatsoever things are lovely. And whatsoever things are, are of a good yeah, report. Really if there be any virtue. Remember virtue went out of Jesus? Yeah. yeah. It's holiness there. It's power. Cleansing. If there be any praise. Jeez. Think on Jeez. these things. That tells me what to think about. And about the purest thing I can find is God, the scriptures, or something like that that takes me that way. It's the only true thing. All those other tormenting thoughts are based on lies. Right. That you're you who you used to be. That you haven't been changed. That God hadn't washed your past. That He hadn't forgiven your sins. That He's going to let your children go to hell. All this stuff that a loving God wouldn't do for you because He loves you. Amen. Well, somebody else might die without Him. Well, that's their deal. They're over there. I'm over here. I have no trouble saying, that's them people. I can't do nothing about them people. But as for me and my house, yes, Lord. we don't serve. Amen. Serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. Free will. Let me think about all the burials of free will. Well, you get yourself so wore out trying to figure out your free will and their free will and someone else's free will. There ain't much free will in this world. All them people screaming about how free will they are. Got somebody twisting them by the arm, making them do all kinds of stupid things. Mm. They got free wills to poke holes in their ears, and poke holes in their nose, and poke holes in their lips. They ain't got very free will. Mm. They're held hostage by thoughts that tell them they've got to be like the world. Yeah. Right. They're in hiding. He's right. coming. Set them free. It's all right. You don't have to have a nose job, ear job, or boob job. You'll be just fine. God made you that way. <laughs> yeah. Boy, that's the honest truth. Amen. If I had blonde hair, people would treat me different. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> You'd be you with blonde hair. Yeah. Blondes have more fun. Till their hair dye starts to turn colors. Yeah. It's not what's on the outside. Come on. What's on the inside? The inside. Oh, we gotta move on because I, I got to go. What you think about becomes real to you. This is where we're gonna close. If you think about zombies all day, yeah. you try to go to bed at night. Zombies, even though they don't exist, <laughs> suddenly become real to you when you go to bed. It's the truth. Why am I looking at you? That's what truth. When I was a little kid, you know, Frankenstein was real to me. Yeah. He was there by my bed on yeah. that big life-size poster I big mama for. Fears become real to you because what you think about becomes real to you. And that's why somebody else comes in the room and they're not afraid of the thing you're afraid of because it ain't real to them. It's just them clothes hanging there that looks like somebody every time I walk by. It's just... It's just it. Ghost. 
If you think about ghosts all the time, they're real to you. There's people out there trying to search for them and find them with uh, technology, you know? Uh, they're going to find the demon they can't get rid of. There you <laughs> go. That's what they're going to wind up with. But they if you think can. about God, yeah. he becomes more and more real, real to dude. you. He's yeah. already real, yeah. 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 but he becomes real. Yeah. And when you think about him taking care of you, him watching over you, him delivering you, see the pattern? Him, him, him. 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 Then in your thoughts, he becomes so real. And we can think about all the negative things, or we can think about how real God's protection is. And whatever I think on, that's what's going to be real to me. My God is going to supply Amen. all of my needs. Amen. His riches Amen. in glory by Christ Jesus. That's for good, isn't it? Didn't say they had to be here all that. But if I got a need, I got the definition of that over there on my wall in two different locations. Because that word need, oh, you ought to check that thing out. It is that long. Mm. It's every requirement, mm -hmm. ever necessary, every needful, every employment. Mm -hmm. It says that word. I'm praying for God to meet my needs. I'm asking Him for employment. I'm going to sit under a tree and wait for my needs to come. That's funny to me. People's out here hunting all these ways to do nothing. And God says right quick, He'll supply everything I need. Every opportunity that it takes to get to where I've got to go. My God will supply all my needs according to His riches and glory. Christ Jesus. That word supply there, it doesn't mean to trickle like on hose. <laughs> it means to engorge, to get as much as possible through the pipe to you. That changes a whole lot. He's not promising to barely get you by. He's promising to get to all that he can to you. And you just have to get in a place where he can get more of it to you. And our thoughts narrow the pipe. And our fears narrow the pipe. And we can't afford to do that. I need to open up big and, and humble myself before God and realize that I don't have strength of myself to do anything. And the more I do that, the bigger I open up the pipe for Him to be strong. For me. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, let's pray. Let's pray, guys. The more I see you, more I I want something, 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 something,